Hello everyone, this is Rudolph Wilkins with Forgotten Fitness and we will be discussing today Course 2 of Bill Pearl's Your Key to Broad Shoulders, which is among the booklets written by Leo Stern and Bill Pearl in the early 1960s, which provided the catalyst for Bill Pearl's Encyclopedia to Bodybuilding, Keys to the Inner Universe. Now, I love these booklets. That's no surprise to any of you that have watched this channel before. And this routine takes the best aspects we learned from Course 1 and enhances them by using different exercise variations which are more difficult and provide a greater challenge. Now, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about any of the exercises in this routine, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. But in the meantime, I hope you all enjoy this video. This program can be found on page 24 of Your Key to Broad Shoulders. As I alluded to in the first video, some people are just blessed with broad shoulder structure. Others have to work to create this illusion by building up the deltoid muscles as well as the lat muscles. A way to do this is by adopting a wide grip during shoulder movements, which this routine utilizes. The following course utilizes this strategy with the aim of enhancing the illusion of shoulder width. Course 2 is slightly more advanced than Course 1 and incorporates exercises which may be more difficult for those who lack shoulder mobility and shoulder health. If pain occurs during training, cease the current exercise and find one that does not cause any discomfort. For a simpler set of exercises, see my previous video discussing Course 1. To balance the body, use the following shoulder specialization program in combination with Mr. Pearl's full body routine found in Building Bulk and Power. Sets and reps may be added or reduced based on which part of the deltoid needs the most work. Remember that these muscles are small, so concentration during exercise in combination with proper form is essential for growth in these areas. And also, remember to control and contract. Slow down. You're not in any kind of rush here. Make sure you're following the entire range of motion throughout each and every exercise. Now we will discuss the routine in a bit more detail. As is the same with Course 1, you will follow this course for approximately 6 weeks and perform 3 workouts a week. Exercise 1 is the standing barbell press behind the neck for 4 sets of between 8 to 10 reps. Then, you will perform wide grip bent over barbell rows for 4 sets of 8 reps. Following this, you will be doing seated palm in alternating dumbbell front press for 3 sets of 8 reps and finally standing medium grip front barbell raise for 3 sets of between 8 to 10 reps. Now I will demonstrate the exercises. Our first exercise here is the standing barbell press behind the neck. If you remember and if you're following along from course 1, the first exercise in that routine was the standing military press. This is a very similar exercise, although slightly more advanced, and definitely a lot more finicky if you have shoulders that are not in the best health. I would say, perform this exercise at your own risk. If your shoulders are perfectly healthy and you have good mobility in them, you'll have no problem with this. And this exercise definitely provides a more direct stimulus to the side delts and rear delts than the standing military press, which is a lot more front delt oriented. So give this exercise a try, and if it gives you any issues, I would suggest going back to course one and see if that helps you out at all. On to exercise number two. For exercise two, we've got the bent over barbell row. In the first course, instead of this exercise, we had the upright row, which is a lot more side delt oriented, I think the idea here with doing a bent over barbell row is to help develop the rear delts as well as the lats to increase that flare and overall look from the front. And I can see where Bill Pearl and Leo Stern were going with this. This is a common exercise and a relatively safe one, so definitely give it a try. On to exercise number three. For exercise number three, we've got the seated palms in alternating dumbbell press. Now, this exercise is not necessarily any more difficult than the standard supported palms and dumbbell press in course one. However, it does provide variation in the routine, which of course is welcome. Maybe the most difficult thing here in comparison to the exercise in course one 
is that you have to use your abdominal muscles to help stabilize your upper body because you're not actually resting your back on an inclined bench. Besides that, it's pretty much the same. And instead of bringing both arms up at the same time, you're alternating between them for a combined total of 16 reps. Now we will move on to the fourth and final exercise in this routine. This final exercise is definitely the most interesting. The standing medium grip front barbell raise, as Bill Pearl calls it, is not too dissimilar from the same front raise we do nowadays. One of the biggest differences here though is instead of stopping at shoulder height, you're actually bringing the barbell all the way up until it is over the top of your head. Many people don't practice this variation anymore because of the common held belief that it can damage the rotator cuff. And while I do think that's true in some people, I think the majority of people with flexible and healthy shoulders will not have a problem with this exercise and will actually find it to be quite difficult and challenging. Overall, this routine provides a lot of variation and is a great supplemental shoulder routine if that is something that you want to work on or is a weak point in your physique. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. But until next time, this is Forgotten Fitness, signing out. Bye-bye.